revisit what we did pre-COVID. And we are going to start at 945 with a time of prayer and quiet time. From 945 to 1015, they're going to shut the doors except for one just in case someone needs to come in to sit down. But it is a time for us to come together and prepare this dwelling place. Get our minds off of what has happened during the week and get our minds on Him visiting us and showing us His glory. Showing us His glory. There's an old song that says, that says prepare the dwelling place. For how else can we be visited by the Holy One? The one who sent His Son, prepare the dwelling place. And we started out this year in breakthrough on our minds, and we may have veered away from that. We may have been distracted from breakthrough because of COVID. But if we do our part, if we prepare our individual dwelling place, if we do our part to come and prepare this place, we will have breakthrough. The breakthrough that you started in January 1 that you might have forgotten about, God has not forgotten about. COVID did not catch him off guard. He knew exactly where we would be today. So I'm asking that you will prepare. Join us next week, 945. And on stage, we are going to be praying. We usually meet in this back prayer room to pray for the pastor before he comes uh, to minister to us. But because of of COVID and just trying to give a little bit more room at 10:15, we're going to start doing that in here on the podium. I mean, on the platform. So you all, please feel free to come and join us. And now we're going to pray. I know you thought, gosh, you preached a little bit. Sorry about that. Y'all bow your heads and join with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you, Father, for all that you have done for us this week. I thank you and praise you, Father, that you have brought us in your dwelling place this morning, Father. And I ask that you would help us to lay aside everything that so easily besets us and stands between us and you and our blessing and our uh, ministry to us, Father, that you would have. I ask that you would touch the words that Pastor John says, Father, and, and your word would go forth and our lives would be changed, Father. But we are here to worship you, and I ask, Father, that you would just allow us to focus in on you. Nothing else is important. Just you, Father. And let us see and feel your glory this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
good morning, everybody. It's uh, good to be with you again here at New Life Online, and uh, we are excited to uh, be a part of your morning worship service and your, uh, your time with the Lord. Uh, if you are a regular and a part of New Life, we want to say that we love you and we miss you. And uh, when you're ready, we are having services, as you know, um, on campus at 1030. And uh, we've actually started back now for a few weeks on Wednesday night. You may or may not be aware of that. I hope that all of you are. Uh, 7 p.m. for our Wednesday service. If you're not a normal part of New Life and you're close to Milledgeville, we would, we would love for you to join us. And uh, if not, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope that you are blessed and ministered to by this word and by this worship. I want to say um, how grateful I am and thankful to be a part of such a fantastic church and, and just full of talent and, and people who use their gifting and, 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 uh, and their, their abilities for God. And uh, that praise team, man, every week they're just right on leading us into the to presence of God, the prayers. The, uh, just ushering in the presence of God. I pray. I know it's difficult that, uh, you know, when you're home and you're not there and it's, it's a little different. But, you know, I encourage you to just be a part. Just worship where you are. God, you know, you're there. You And hopefully you have sensed his presence right where you are. And uh, I pray you're going to be blessed by this word as well. If you haven't given yet and uh, you would like to give and uh, tithe or give offerings or whatever... Uh, you have for the Lord, you can go to uh, uh, through our PayPal portal on our website, or you can also go to our mobile app, and uh, there'll be information, um, hopefully, uh, where you can find that mobile app in the uh, description or in maybe in the comments of this. This is just new that we just launched out, a new app. Uh, we replaced our other one, and uh, it's a Tidely app, also in that Tidely app. Is, is an opportunity for you to give through Tithely or you can give through text through Tithely as well. All of them come to the church. And uh, so just go ahead and do that. We're grateful for your faithfulness. More than that, God is. I know he's been blessing you. He's blessing us. God is just faithful, isn't he? And, uh, and thank you. And let me just tell you again, because I say this a lot, but I want you to understand, you know, God has given us the ability to be able to bless people and help people as he's been faithful through this time. Um, this wholly just different season that we've been in. And uh, just remember that when you give to New Life, you're giving through New Life, and we're able to do that. And so we're grateful and thankful for that. All right. So last week, um, we, we looked at a, a message, actually the message where we got the series Stand Firm from, where we looked at a message called Gear Up, Be Strong, and Stand Firm. And I actually thought in my mind, and, and in, in our own campus service, I, I actually talked about the fact that I thought this was good, that was going to be the last message of the series. And it would have been a good place to end, um, but the Holy Spirit had, had uh, a different idea. And so this, this week, I was studying and reading and looking at some things, and uh, a couple of things crossed my, my way. And just the Spirit of God just began to move with me or move on me. And I believe that God wanted us to, to add one more. And we're going to finish up this series, our fifth week, with this, this message today. Um, now, a couple of weeks back in this series, uh, we, did a, we did a message called When You Can't See. And if you remember, in that message, we talked about Paul, his journey going into Rome, and how, and we talked about the shipwreck. And and uh, you remember that it was it was um, it was it was really about trusting God when you don't know how things are going to turn out and and uh, and how God follows through and why we can trust God because of what he does and who he is and what he's done and and how he speaks to us and his angels are there. Hopefully you remember all that. If you didn't if you didn't get to see that and watch that and 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 and, and, and take that message in, then I just encourage you to do it. In fact, um, Right here on this very YouTube channel that you are watching, all of this entire series, in fact, all of our messages since, you know, March, um, when we started this video platform are on there. And, and I encourage you to just to go back and make sure that you, you, you see those and, and take those in. <clears throat> I don't want you to just watch it, um, but you know what I'm saying. But today we're going we're gonna to kind of pick up on that just a little bit. I'm gonna, what I want to do is I want to give you the next part of what happened in this journey after the shipwreck. 
just to set up what God is going to be speaking to us today. Um, and so I'm going to read in your notes, uh, if you if you follow along in the events app or you happen to download the, 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 the outline from the website already, um, you're only going to see less or, or verse three and four, but I'm going to read all the way from verse one to verse six just to give you some, some background and, some, and, and, and just to set this up. So let's go there. Acts chapter 28, verse 1. When they had been brought safely through, then we found out uh, that the island was called Malta. You remember they shipwrecked and they wound up on this island. And the natives there showed us an extraordinary kindness. For before, um, because of the rain that had set in and because of the cold, they kindled a fire and received us all. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. And when the natives saw this creature hanging from his hand, they began to say to one another, undoubtedly, this man is a murderer. And though he has been saved from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. They expected him to die. Verse 5 says, however... He shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no harm. But they were expecting him, uh, they were expecting that he was about to swell up and suddenly fall down dead. Now the story actually goes on, but I just want to stop there. Because this scripture tells us that the people around this fire and, and sitting around with Paul and Luke here as they are going... He said, you know, they're basically saying, you're getting what you deserve. And, and I mean, I want you to think about it. You know, surely they heard how they wound up there. They knew they were shipwrecking. So I want you to think about, like, especially if you're a part of the people on the boat. They get in a boat with Paul, and then a terrible storm shows up. Fourteen days and nights of darkness, hurricane winds, the ship's falling apart. Finally, they have a shipwreck. And remember, Paul basically tells them, this is happening because of me. But don't worry, God's with us and he's going to save us. And now they get to the, an island and people are taking care of him and a snake comes out and bites him. And you can see how the enemy is out trying to just destroy Paul and stop him from doing what God wants him to do. Right? And so I can imagine the people saying, well, man, this guy's cursed. This guy, you know, we need to get away from this joker. You know, I mean, we need to get shed of him fast and... So, you know, really, let's stop right here because it is so important for us to understand something as we bring all of this message series that we've been talking about in standing firm and faith and trusting God and believing and holding on and, and all the things that we've been talking about. It's important for us to understand um, a, a very important thing today. I mean... You know, we've been talking about this faith and there's a powerful word from the Lord last week about how God will come through and how God would have us. We ended by talking about how he said, put on the armor, stand strong. I'm going to come through. My plan's going to work. Put on your armor and be ready. Stand firm in the battle, in the storm, in the chaos, in the trial. But we must remember this. And this is the important lesson I was just talking about. The enemy will always continue to fire what if darts at you. Now, you'll see that statement in your notes. The enemy will continue to fire what if darts at you. You remember that Paul said we have a shield of faith. And the shield of faith was, was to, to fend off the fiery darts of the enemy. And you, ever, you know what I'm talking about when I say what if darts? Okay. God, I'm in this. I see this. I'm fighting this. I trust you. But what if this happens? And what if that happens? Or what if it goes down like this and not like I hope or not like I need or not like I want or not like I'm trusting you for or like I feel like you said is going to happen? What if my worst fear comes about? What if, what if, what if? Anybody besides me experience those what if darts that seem to just bombard our minds and then immediately you start to feel something happening because what ifs are designed to make you have fear and anxiety they are designed 
to make you entertain imaginations of the worst case scenario and they ultimately are designed to kill your faith and cause you to not be able to stand. Now you remember I just told you part of the armor is the shield of faith which Paul says extinguishes the fiery darts of the enemy. So when the devil shoots fiery darts of what if at your mind you need to lift up the shield of faith Remember who you serve. That was one of our messages. Let your faith uh, come from unlikely places even. That was another of our messages. Even when you can't see where you are going, you need to just stand up like Paul did in the midst of that ship and trust what God has said. Don't allow what if. Don't entertain what if. Don't think what if. Don't imagine what if. Don't say what if. Stand up in your faith Trusting that God knows, that our God sees, that our God is with us, and our God is able. Somebody say amen. And you say with confidence, not what if, but even if. Stop saying what if. When the enemy brings what if in you, let your faith arise and change that what if and say, even if. And that's the title of this message today. What if? No. Even if. Even if this happens. Even if that happens. Even if I go down like this and it, and it, and it happens like I don't hope or like, a, like I need it to happen or like I'm trusting for. Even if my worst fear comes about, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to believe in him. I'm going to stand and know that my God is able, that my God is with me, and my God will never leave me nor forsake me, that my God will see me through and his plan for me is happening no matter what right now looks like. Not what if, even if. See, I'm going to stand. Tell yourself, I stand like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood and they said, my God is able to deliver us, O king, out of this fire. But even if he doesn't. Notice that what they said. They didn't say, but what if he doesn't? They weren't talking. Shadrach says, nope, God's going to take care of us. Meshach goes, what if he doesn't? You didn't see that. They bound their faith together. And what they said was, even if he doesn't. Even if he chooses to work a different way, even if he allows us to get taken out by this fire, even if he doesn't do what we believe and hope that he will do, we are still not going to bow a knee to you and serve your idols or give in to fear and lies and intimidation and the schemes of the enemy in this world and in this life. Say with Daniel, even if you put me in a lion's den, my God is able to shut the mouths of these lions and see me safe to the other side. Not what if, even if, even if, even if the money isn't there, even if the, he the healing doesn't come, even if reconciliation doesn't happen, even if they say no, even if they won't change, even if they won't accept me or love me, even if everything changes, even if I got to change, I will trust you even in the fire, even in the lion's den, even in the storm, even when the snake bites. It doesn't matter what comes my way, even if it all falls apart and nobody cares, nobody trusts, nobody depends, I'm going to keep having faith in my God. That's what the Bible's talking about when he says, having done all to do to stand, stand there for So we're just picking up on where we left off. And I believe God wants us to understand this. Now, we could have just ended this last week with that very powerful, victorious message of gearing up, standing strong, standing firm. And this right here, my friends, is also a very powerful message. Don't think just because we're looking at, well, what if something happens? We're not looking at what if something happens. We're looking at even if something happens. See, this is when faith, this is when God comes through. Those who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek them. Even if it comes against me, even if trials come, 
Even if problems come, even if it looks like the devil has the upper hand, he doesn't. And my God is able to do it. My God is able to turn it around. My God is able to use what the enemy meant for evil for good. My God is working all things out for my good. Because I love him and I'm called according to his purpose. Are you following me with this? Are you with me? Say amen. But you see, even if faith doesn't just happen. So let's see some things about this even if faith as we bring this series to a close and we will learn something here. So the first thing we need to understand is that even if faith takes time to build. Even if faith is built over many years of time, sometimes it's built when we repeatedly choose God's way over our own fleshly desires or pleasure. It's a faith that is built by making decisions to walk according to God's way, even when it's hard, uncomfortable, even when it makes a sacrifice, change, stop or start something, leave or stay with somebody. Choosing to do something or choosing not to do something. Choosing someone or not choosing someone. Even when all these things happen, we consistently choose God. And even if faith is built through that process, it doesn't just happen overnight. So if you said, well, I wish I had even if faith. And I stumbled last time. I, I didn't come through. That's all right. Keep choosing God. Keep working on it because it'll get stronger every time. Keep sticking with the even if. Here's what the word tells us in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. And he asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Daniel had decided, I don't care what it takes. I'm sticking to my guns. I'm sticking with my God. I'm doing what he called me to do. I'm going to choose him every time. And that faith, see, that built up over Daniel's fast and Daniel's time and Daniel's efforts. When they threw him in the lion's den, he didn't have to be afraid because he knew God can come through. He believed God would come through. God actually did come through. But Daniel had a mindset that said, even if God doesn't, you follow him. So the second thing we need to see is that even if faith usually develops through trials, not only does it take a while to happen, it usually comes through trials. Now, I know that is not the news you wanted to hear, but my friend, let me tell you, it is exactly what happens. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not have it easy. They didn't come out of the womb grab the midwife by the collar and start pronouncing, bring on the king and the devil. God has sent us to teach this world something. No, they just were regular people like us, living their life, young men just doing what little young guys do, living their love, regular young guy life, and all of a sudden they're snatched out of their homes. They were forced to live as captives, as slaves in a foreign land and to serve a tyrant king against their will and against all the dreams that they had for their lives, against all the promise that they knew was theirs, and all of a sudden everything changes. But even in that, God gave them favor for their faithfulness. You see, it's the very same for us. We don't just have this even if faith. The more we walk through the fire, the more we see his faithfulness, the more we experience his faithfulness, the more we put on the armor and stand in the battle, the more confident we become in his ability to rescue us, in his ability to stand with us, in his ability to come through for us. The more confident we become in his goodness, the more likely we are to have even if faith. Are you following me there? Now listen, I'm like you. I don't like trials. I know you don't like them either. No one does. But there is a very important principle at work in this process. And it leads us to our very next thing. And that is that faith, even if faith, faith that says even if is firmly grounded in the character of God. See, you see a pattern here. You've got to understand that even if faith takes time. 
even if faith goes through a hard time. And even if faith says, I can trust God over time and in the hard time because I know the character of God. And my faith is grounded in who he is. You remember what we said? Those who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We have to have faith in God's character. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were convinced that God was able. They were convinced that he was good. They were convinced that he was faithful to his people and to their faithfulness. They were convinced that he would rescue the people even after they suffered a while. They were also convinced that he was true to his word and faithful to his promise. Paul said the same thing. Paul said, do you remember on the ship before the wreck? He said, friends, don't you worry about it because this night an angel of the God whom I serve stood next to me and I believe it's going to happen just like he said it's going to happen. They knew the character of God. They had served him, loved him, been in his, in his will, walked in his way and saw him come through, learned from the past, learned from the word, learned from their elders, learned from going through the fire. They knew the character of God. So when the serpent bit Paul, Paul didn't panic. Paul just shook it off in the fire, understanding perhaps prophetically if he hadn't written it already or or if he hadn't he didn't write that part actually if he hadn't heard it already but you remember Jesus said that if a, even if a serpent buys you it won't harm you Paul says okay I'll take him at his word right now I'm not telling you to go play around with snakes but I'm saying when you're in the will of God and you're doing the purpose of God, even if one comes against you. And we realize that there the serpent is not so much just a snake anyways, but he's talking about the enemy. What you've got to see here is that the, it was the enemy brought the storm. It was the enemy brought the trial. It was the enemy trying to take Paul out. And you say, well, I don't know about that. You've got to see that the enemy had, maybe didn't know God's plan why Paul needed to get to Rome. But he knew something was up. He knew Paul was anointed. He knew, listen... Paul, if you read the rest of that story, Paul immediately after that snake bit him, they said, you're a God. He goes, no, I'm not a God, but you know what? I serve God. Come here. You're sick? Let me pray for you. He prayed for one and they were healed. Then the Bible says all the people on the island started coming to get prayed for and healed. Don't you know? Hey, look, a revival broke out right there. Paul says, I, don't, I didn't want to be on this ship. I told them not to go, but it's all right. I trust God. We're going to come here. They get shipwrecked. The snake bites him. He shakes it off. Paul says, well, looks like a good time to do ministry. I didn't want to be here, but here I am. So even if it doesn't look like what I'm supposed to do, here's some people. They need to know about Jesus. I'm a preacher. My job's to tell them about Jesus. My calling is to spread the good news of the gospel of Christ. So that's what he started doing. Even if. See, he just knew the character of God and he just started doing what he knew to do. He trusted God and he kept on keeping on to have even if kind of faith. We must know God's character, that he is a good father, that he loves his children and he does what is best for us every time. Notice I didn't say he does what we want. Or what we expect because sometimes he doesn't do what we want or expect. Sometimes he does. And, that, and really those times is just when our want and expectations line up with his purpose. Because truthfully if we trust God he's going to do what he wants. Because he knows what's best. And we need to allow that. We need to not fight or wrestle against that. We need to not struggle against that. Because he is God and we are not. Say that to yourself, would you? He is God, I am not. Look at your neighbor. He is God, you are not. We are God. Here's what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Do you know what that means? God has good character. He does what he says. He's true to form every single time. We must be grounded in a faith that builds on his character. And then finally, even if faith understands that God isn't confined by human understanding. Aren't you glad about that? 
<laughs> so often we want to put God in a box and confine him to how we believe he should act or intervene in certain situations. We think he should always heal. We think he should always intervene. He should always provide. He should always keep that person from leaving. He should always change that situation. He should always make us not hurt, not feel bad, not go through the pain, not struggle, not have to walk uphill at all, right? We should always meet our physical needs according to our limited understanding. This is what we think. We think he should open up doors in our time, the doors we want, and in our ways. Let's just be honest about it. But that is not how God operates because God operates outside of our understanding. you got to know he's omniscient. He knows all things. He sees all things. He's everywhere all at once. He's in the past. He's in the now. He's in the future. He's always looking. He's in tomorrow. He's in yesterday. He's in next year. He understands everything. He knows the, every scenario and he works out his plan according to his understanding, not ours. Even if faith understands that. Even if faith gets to a place that says, I don't get it, but I know God does. I don't understand it, but that's okay because he does. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know what it holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, right? Even if faith says, that's the way we'll believe. Now, we may not want to admit it. We don't want to help our even ourselves or others to believe that that's the way we think but our actions betray us we must understand as so many people before us have that God is not confined that his purposes are often accomplished outside of our human understanding he's able to do the impossible He's able, the Bible tells us, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. Come on, somebody, if you understand what I'm saying. We need to understand that God often allows circumstances, painful circumstances that seem contrary to his good nature to point the world back to him, to create good for our own lives or to give glory to the Father. They understood people before us Forefathers who've lived in the faith, these people we look at and learn from, they don't always understand, but they understood one thing. We don't have to get it all because God knows it all, and we just need to see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is this. Even if faith trusts that God knows better than we do, that's hard for us because we are like, let me see it, God. Let me touch it, God. Let me hear it, God. Can you show me about it, God? Can you tell me about it, God? We're in a situation right now in my own family, and we're just wondering what's going to happen. We see some possibilities, but we don't know if it's going to happen. In the natural, some of it looks like there's no way it can happen. But I'm going to tell you that I stand in faith, and I say, even if. My God understands things I don't. My God knows the things I don't. My God owns a cattle of a thousand hills. He will take care of it all. None of it's caught him by surprise. Even if. <laughs> Isaiah 55 and 9 says this. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. That's God talking. Now, I don't know about you, but I long to consistently operate in an even if kind of faith. It's not easy. It's a process, a process of walking in obedience, a process of learning his character, a process at times that is walking through painful circumstances in fire and seeing him bring beauty out of ashes. But I want to tell you, it's always about allowing God to be God instead of expecting him to act as we think he should act. Even if he doesn't do what we think, we still stand firm. We still stand strong. We still gear up and we still trust our God because greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Our God is not confined. Our God is not limited. Our God is not short on time, ideas, or resources. Our God can do it all and he will do it all, even if he doesn't.
I'm still going to trust him. Somebody say amen. And listen, as we do these things, we will find ourselves learning to say more and more, even if. Not what if, even if. What if comes in your mind, you just change it. You say, nope, what if, I don't have time for you, even if. Now I want to close this message and I want to close this series by reminding us what the scriptures have to say. I just want to read off several scriptures to you right now just to give you encouragement. You ready? You should see them. If not, jot them down and, 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 and save them. Put them somewhere. And when you get discouraged, when you get in the tough time and you think, what if? No, look back at what God's word promises and you say, even if. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says this. And God is able. Somebody say able. Able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. 2 Timothy 1.12 For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Romans 16, 25 says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, he is able to establish you, the word says. Jude 24 and 25 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. That's Hebrews 7, 25. And let me round it off with this one right here. John chapter 10, verse 28 and 29 says, and I give them eternal life. Listen, what if the devil takes me out? What if I don't make it through this? What if I don't get to see the healing? What if, what if? No, even if, even if, he says, and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my hand or out of the Father's hand. That's John 10, 28 and 29. The Word of God promises even if He is able. Now one last scripture, Matthew 9, 28. Jesus asked this question. Do you believe that I am able to do this? Now, I know I'm taking that a little bit out of context, but I just wanted to end it today because all of this starts with you saying, okay, God, I believe, I trust. Even if you have to say this morning, like the father on the road to, said to Jesus about his daughter, I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. Just start. Just turn to him. Just say yes, God, not what if. Even if I'm counting on you, I'm trusting in you, and I know you're going to do it. I don't even really know if you're going to do it, but my faith rises up in me and says, you're going to do it. So I'm confessing with my mouth, and I'm believing in my heart, you are going to do it. I realize that there is power of life and death in my tongue, and so I say, yes, Lord. Yes, I believe. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, right where you are, I just want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, I thank you. And I realize, God, that there are just extreme, I'm talking about extreme circumstances going on in our lives today, in our world today, in our families today, in our circumstances today, in our bodies, in our minds, in our emotions. We are stressed out 
everywhere we turn. We are attacked at every corner. We seem to see the world gaining foot and gaining ground. And every time we turn around, it seems like the devil is right there to say, hey, I'm here. I got something else for you to deal with. But Lord, we thank you that we don't have to deal with all of this on our own because you said the battle is not ours. The battle belongs to you. So we're not going to what if anymore. We're going to rebuke what if. We're going to cast down what if. We're going to take what if captive and we're going to force it to be obedient to the word of God. And the word of God says my God is able. My God is sufficient. My God is more than enough. My God can do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think. Not what if. Even if. And we're going to trust in you and stand strong in you. And we are going to watch as you come through and if you don't then we know you got something better you got something greater because you always do right you always do best you are God and you are good and so we stand and believe you today God one more time we trust you we lay it at your feet we put it in your hands come through for us God we know you can trust we trust it we know you have the plan we know you have the purpose even if we don't see it God you know and so we believe you now do it, Lord. Make it happen. Provide. 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 Heal. Come through. Do what you need to do, God, in whatever way you need to do it. You're going to do it. And so we do not allow doubt to enter our mind. We do not allow fear to enter our mind. We do not allow what if to entertain us any longer. We say today, even if. In Jesus' name, even if. My friend, I want to end with this. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, or you've walked away from the Lord and your relationship is weighing cold, I want to tell you, you can come back home right now. All you have to do is call out to Him. All you have to do is to say, yes, Lord. All you have to do is say, I surrender. Help me, God. I'm turning to you. I need you. Save me. I repent. I don't care how you say it. God knows your heart. And when you turn to him, the Bible says he saves you right then. He'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. He'll pick you up and put your feet on solid ground. And he'll start you on a path to change your what if to an even if. Trust him today. And if you do, reach out to us. Reach out to us. There's a way right there. It says connection. Reach out to us. We want to hear from you. We want to pray with you. We want to celebrate with you. And we want to have an opportunity to lead you in discipleship. I pray that you've been blessed by this series. I pray that you've been ministered to by this word. And I feel like God has done a special thing in you today. One more time. Can you say with me, not what if. No, not what if. Even if. Amen. I bless you in the name of the Lord. We'll see you next time.